How incredibly cheesy is that? There you go, that's me, Cheesy Green. I do Cheesy Greens. That's what I do. I do cheese. I pose beside flip charts. I draw. If, had I thought I could have brought a big flip chart here and I could have done a drawing on the flip chart and it would have been very impressive had you been a child. Um, you're not children, so I didn't bother doing that. Um, I didn't want to insult your intelligence, but I do. I do pose by flip charts quite a lot. There you go, there's me posing by flip chart, <laughs> looking cheesy. Cheesy green, that's what I do. I pose cheesily by flip charts, there's a cheesy flip chart. That, Matt Smith, that's the most popular doctor at the moment. If you ask primary school kids which doctor, they like, shut up. If they want primary school kids... Okay, you're just going to carry on doing that, aren't you? Right, so uh, there you go, um, me. And uh, one more. I have no idea what's happening with my hair there. Very much a bad hair day. Um, this is uh, me in a school, teaching kids how to do what it is I do for a living. Because I was very lucky. I've been able to turn my hobby into my job and then teach people how to do it. And there's a clue to the hobby and the job. There's my name down there, Kev F, that's me. And uh, that's my name on Doctor Strange's underpants, Doctor Strange's pants in... Uh, can anybody identify the character, big blue fella at the top left? That's Banana Man. That's what Banana Man looks like nowadays. Well, that's what Banana Man looked like until a few months ago, until they made him look like he used to do in the olden days. And the reason I included Doctor Strange in Banana Man is because I used to do Doctor Strange. Um, I was one of the artists in the 90s reading uh, Doctor Strange. Um, when I started teaching kids how to do comics, I was showing them my artwork from Marvel comics, from things like Doctor Strange and Star Trek. There's my Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock, just out of shot. I couldn't fit him into the slide. That's his chin. Leonard Nimoy's chin up there. My name, Leonard Nimoy's chin. Clearly, my name, more important to me than Leonard Nimoy's chin. And uh, Gladiators. I used to do comics which were based on TV shows. Um, anybody seen the Gladiators TV show? I'm I can guarantee more people saw the Gladiators TV show than saw the Gladiators comic. I lost a fortune doing the Gladiators comic. I was very pleased with myself because um, I've been working in comics for a few years and I, I became an entrepreneur. I found, uh, I, I watched the Gladiators, which I wouldn't have normally watched, but I watched it with my young cousins. And I thought, this would make a great comic. And so I got uh, in touch with LWT. I said, is anybody doing the comic? They weren't. I found a publisher who I've been working with on some other uh, photo magazines. I brought them together. We made this comic. It sold for shit. It, was, uh, <laughs> it really didn't work. Um, at the other extreme of uh, publishing, Captain Clevedon is Earth's most parochial superhero. I live in a small town near Bristol called Clevedon. There's Clevedon Pier, um, One Direction, just out of shot. But One Direction did film a video recently on that pier. That's the town where I live. And it's the biggest selling. It outsold the Beano that week. Um, tip for anybody in marketing, don't make your target audience a town with a population of only 5,000 people. <laughs> only 10% of whom are likely to buy the comic set in their town. Um, it's, uh, it's finite, it's got a ceiling, just a word from the wise there. Uh, so I also work for things like Doctor Who Adventures. I get paid money to draw Daleks. Uh, you can tell that's from 2010 because the Daleks are the wrong shape. Wrong shape Daleks, bad. The Daleks don't look like Teletubbies. I got paid to draw those. Um, you're quite right, it's, it's very cheesy stuff I do. Uh, oh, she's a highway woman, I do her. And, uh, oh yeah, wedding invitations. Anybody wants me to do their wedding invitations? Now I realise, I realise I'm in a room full of illustrators who can possibly draw far better than I can draw. That is naff and that is cheesy. Uh, but it does pay more than uh, the, ba the big thing that I'm most famous for, which is um, writing a drawing for the Beano. There you go, there's me, writing and drawing. Uh, the Bass Street Kids, or Bass Street Kids Adventures, also starring... Um, Dennis and Dennis. In fact, you may, you may have read that in your own childhood. It's from about 10 years ago now. Uh, that was the Christmas issue where I had the whole Beano to myself. And although I've worked for Marvel Comics, I've worked for loads of things like Red Dwarf and the Gladiators and, and, and Doctor Who, and done a load of TV-related um, material and comics. Uh, for Marvel Comics, I also did uh, Ghost Rider 2099 and various comics in the 90s. Uh, the Beano is the work that I'm most proud of and that it's the most fun to do because I've been able to be part of history. I've been able to add to the legend that is Roger the Dodger. Uh, Roger the Dodger, I, I invested in with a character who's, uh, I made him much more uh, conniving, Machiavellian and money-oriented. I, I mean, he probably already is, but you know, when you, when you take these characters on and make them your own, you actually get to, well, like the Bastard Kids, I actually got to give, give the individual Bastard Kids actual individual characters, which most of the time I feel they don't do. 
Um, I also, by the way, do a couple of things which you may have seen. The Scottish Falsetto Sock Puppet Theatre. If you've ever seen those at the Edinburgh Fringe, uh, that's, that's, uh, I, do, I know, I don't sound like the boys, but the boys are me. And our new show at Edinburgh this year is called Minging Detectives. That's uh, Edinburgh. We'll be on at the Gilded Balloon at 10.30 at night. And I do a show called The Sitcom Trials. I don't know if any of you, anybody think they can write a sitcom? No? You're the first people I've ever met who don't think they could write a sitcom. Uh, the Sitcom Trials is a show that I do where uh, we take the work of uh, writers and we put them on stage and sitcoms compete head to head and the audience decide which one they like the best. And that was the final at the uh, Edinburgh Fringe. But uh, this, is, this is amongst the Beano work that I do and I'm most proud of. I, I was the guy who invented the Bass Street Werewolves. I was the guy who invented the Bass Street Zombies. Now, zombies, pretty much ubiquitous in comics nowadays and in youth culture. But back in 2008, I was worried that the editor, that's him, Alan Digby, the editor of the time, I was worried that he wasn't replying to me when I'd pitched this script, uh, the Bass Street Zombies. I thought, yeah, zombies is a bit too far for the Beano. The Beano, which is read by six-year-olds uh, up to 12-year-olds. And when he did eventually reply, he just said, I apologise for being 28 days late replying. You see what he did there? 20 <laughs> Wasted. Um, anyway, he's, um, he's a fantastic editor. Um, my favourite um, editors have been the ones that allow the creators to have their creative head. Does anybody read the Vino? Has anybody seen the Vino in the last decade? Excellent. Did anybody used to read the Vino, then you stro- stopped reading the Vino when you discovered it was insulting to the intelligence of eight-year-olds? Yeah, me too. <laughs> But a lot of creators have had the opportunity to do original and inventive work. Jamie Smart, um, Laura Howell, myself, Mike Pierce, and a fellow called Gary Northfield, who's just released a book called Julius Zebra, and previously did uh, Derek the Sheep. They mean a lot if you're nine years old. Trust me, they really do. And uh, the wise editors allowed them to do the work that they thought was great. Um, one of the things that I do, which I think is great, but it might just be pathetic, is I hide my name in the background everywhere. There's me in the attack of the 50-foot nits, and there's my name up there, and there's me. Can you see my name there? My name's hidden there. Can you spot my name? Who spotted my name? Kev F. You say it's pathetic, and it really is in the shadows along there. I really do. And just, just so the kids will become fans of my work, but it totally does work. And there's my name hidden down there, and that's where Clevedon is, where Captain Clevedon is. I'm originally Scottish, by the way. Any other fellow Scots in? Yeah, we invented comics. Comics are ours. We can claim those. Totally ours. Um, uh, the Scottish accent only comes out when I'm, I'm performing the boys. Uh, Rocket Pants was a comic strip that I did um, where I took Plug out of the Bass Street Kids. And Rocket Pants, the title, came from when I used to work on Red Dwarfs magazine. And there was a character called Robbie Rocket Pants, who I pitched as a story. And just as we were about to run Robbie Rocket Pants, they cancelled Red Dwarfs magazine just before series six started. Don't ask me why. And uh, so I was left with these stories. So I turned them into stories for the Beano. And then when the Beano decided that um, Plug's arse catching fire on a regular basis wasn't entertainment, I I stole all the stories for myself. And I made Hot Rod Cow, my own self-published comic which appears, uh, Hot Rod Cow appears in the Beano as Plug's favourite character. Hot Rod Cow, his name is an anagram of my favourite TV series, which is? Hot Rod Cow is an anagram of? Exactly, well done, yes. Uh, Hot Rod Cow is an anagram of Doctor Who. And uh, he appeared, first of all, in the Beano, and then he became my own. Parodies, homages and pastiches are a thing that I love doing, because I think the kids can be, you can flatter the intelligence of, in, of, of children, and you can insult the intelligence of children. And I think the latter is to be avoided. Flattering their intelligence, nobody, but nobody who read that edition of the Beano would recognise what I was even doing. Does anybody recognise which comic I'm paying homage to there? Issue 100 of the X-Men. From 1970. Uh, why? What was the point of doing that? That's Professor X there. That's X Men versus replicants of X Men. And so I did the Bastard Kids versus replicants of Bastard Kids. Their robot. It, it featured a panel where Dennis the Menace smashes the robot in the face and says, Stare into the fist of Dennis. That was an homage to a Judge Dredd story from 1970. Pointless. Absolutely pointless. But it's what I do. There you go. Roger the Dodger's Reservoir Dodge. Why? They're eight years old. There's no reason they will get this. It's because um, comics can work on these levels, and they often do the best comics do. If you've ever read Adventure Time, if you've read The Simpsons at Glastonbury, uh, Miracle Man, he's a parody of... uh, Oh, God, I've only got ten seconds left. Okay, well, that was a satire. Google it. And uh, so was that. Pansy Potter, they're hilarious, but you haven't actually got time to read those three strips. Because uh, this is the thing that I was going to talk about, and with one minute, second over time, I'm afraid I can't tell you much about the fact that I go into schools 
and te teach kids how to do what it is I do. I'm evangelical about the importance of comics for the literacy of kids. Kids learn like I did. I had the best reading age in my primary school year because I was reading unnecessarily long words and they were in voice bubbles. So um, I go into schools and kids produce comics. They, they look like these. These are the, the comics that I produced with kids in the schools. Um, they, each of them, in the space of two hours, has created a comic strip, and then I do a drawing of every single one of their hideous little faces. We run these off on the photocopier, and they take them home. Uh, they come up with these titles themselves. These are titles invented by children, all invented by... Six nuns fighting a fiery inferno. I also work in Ireland. That was an Irish comic up there. Um, unfortunately, I've run out of time, so I won't be able to explain to you why that is my enemy. I hate that. W.H. Smith, call those comics. They're not comics. They're just plastic bags with things in that don't actually include comic strips. That's comics. Comics is stuff done by kids. Comics is one picture after another telling a story. Comics is what I love. Comics is what I do. Comics is what I teach. And thank you.